In this video, you've learned how to code your own A star algorithm from scratch and then apply this algorithm for your unit movement, as you can see right now. And you will be able to avoid the obstacles and only navigate on the walkable terrain. This is the first video of this series. The series will be around five or six videos because it takes time to implement everything. If you want to set up this project, as you see right now, uh, you can download the zip file in the description of the video. There is also a video explaining how to set it up. If you want to follow my course where I'm explaining everything in more details and you will create this RTS game uh, from scratch because it's a part of the bigger game where we will be able to build the buildings and everything, you can also find the link in the description. And now, without any further waiting, let's get into the Aster algorithm. Open our code. We have wrote all of the nodes here in Notes.txt. So if you want to give it a try and you want to implement finding the path yourself, you can go ahead and you can try to implement this algorithm here in the find path. Okay, I will remove these debug logs, you don't need them. And also this debug log down here. Okay, and the first thing here in the find path that I will do, I will check if the start node or end node are nulls. If they are nulls, there is no reason to find the path. So I will just write if start node is equal to null or add node is equal to null, then return from here. Okay, is from the function and let's write here debug log. Debug log and what we'll write here some message. Cannot find the path or something like this. Cannot, cannot find the path. Cannot find the path or invalid path, whatever you want to have here as a log. Okay, then we need to work with the lists. Right, we need to have a one open list and one closed list as we discussed here. Okay, we need to list open list and the closed list. So let's create these lists. So in pathfinding here, I will create a first open list, so list. Uh, you need to get it from system collections generic. So up here you need to have a using, using system collections generic. And the list of type node, we'll be storing nodes into this list and we'll call it simply open list. Okay, and create a new list. Okay, then we'll create a foreclosed list, and this will be not the list, it could, it could be list, uh, but I will write as a hash set. Hash set, okay, and again of type of node, and we'll call it closed list. Okay, hash set is just simply a uh, type of the list. It works a little bit differently as, as the list, and uh, comparing to the list what's different, it, can, it, it, it will prevent you to store duplicates in, uh, in the list, okay? And uh, if you want to try to store the duplicate, so if I would like to store, store two nodes of the same, say, two same nodes, it wouldn't allow me. It would still keep just one node, so it will keep unique in elements. And that's what we want in a closed list to have a unique elements, and it's faster uh, to retrieve the elements. The only problem is that there is, the order of the elements is not guaranteed, but we don't care about it. Okay, and get a new hash set. Okay, new hash set of the nope, node, oh, we can just write it like this. Okay, so closed list is faster to in the retrieving in the retrieving element. Okay, but the order is not guaranteed and it prevents duplicates. Okay, now we have an open list, we have a closed list. And I will write here what we are doing else. Active node is zero, zero. All right, and then we are adding also to open list our, our starting node. I didn't include it here, the starting node. I didn't I add it immediately to the to the closed list. Yeah, that we'll add it to the closed list, but before that, ah, here, here's the step. Ha! <laughs> open list zero, zero. Okay, so we need to add our zero, zero node, to, so our starting node to open list. So let's write here open list dot add, and we'll add our starting node zero, zero. And I will write here while loop. All right. And we'll be doing this while loop open list length, or open list uh, counts rather here. We're not working with the errors, but list. Is larger than zero. Okay, so we'll be iterating here in the while loop a while open list count is larger than zero. So if we have neighbors and we have uh, items in open list and we have uh, nodes in open list, but there is still something to evaluate, we are continuing the while loop and we'll be continuing the while loop until we'll find the end node. Okay, so now we are going to find the current node, which is very simple because we have only one item, but we need to write it more generically. So we want to get here current node or active node, whatever you want to call it, I will call it current node. I know in the notes here we call it active node, I guess. Active node, we can call it also active node. 
current node here doesn't matter and here we need to how we are getting the node from the uh, open list we talked about it we are trying to find the node with the lowest f cost okay so create a create a new method down here and we'll call it uh, get lowest f cost node or something like this so right here new method which will return a node and uh, we'll call it get lowest f cost node get lowest f cost node all right, as the input here, we'll get all of our nodes from the open list. So let's pass here a list of nodes. It will be open list. And we'll try to get the lowest uh, F cost node. So we'll do it like this. We'll get a node and we'll call it lowest F cost node. And uh, initially, we'll assign it to the first item in open list. So open list at the index of zero will be by the default our first low, low, lowest F cost node. Now we are going to iterate all of the nodes in the open list. So right here for each and type of this is a node, node in open list. All right, and right here if statement. All right here on the, like this. And in if we'll be checking for the, the lowest node. So if the current node we are iterating through, so this node f cost, we don't have a node f cost. We didn't, we didn't assign f cost and everything uh, and all of these things uh, uh, into our node so we need to fix it we need to go keep it yeah keep it uh, here like this no worries about the issues go to node and you see here we are didn't we are not storing uh, f cost g cost and h cost so please just write here so let's write here public public float f cost or just start with g cost g cost uh public float h cost uh public float f cost all right, and also each node will have its own parent. So let's write here also public node and parent. Okay, so G cost, as we, to as, as we were talking about, this is the cost from the start node to the current node or the candidate node. And the H cost is the distance from the candidate node to the end node. And F cost is G cost plus H cost. Okay, and now we should be able to access uh, the f cost so if the node we are iterating through f cost is smaller than lowest f f cost node uh, f cost or if they are if they have same f, uh, f cost so if the node has the same f cost so if the node f cost is the same as the lowest no f lowest f cost node f cost then we will determine according to the h cost so if the node h cost is smaller than lowest f cost h cost then this this node will be chosen as the lowest f cost node so the lowest f cost node will be the node we are iterating if these conditions are met okay in any other case here is return here lowest f cost node and this will find you the lowest f cost node from the open list okay so here we'll get this get lowest f cost node we'll pass here open list okay now we have now we have a current node and we can check if the current node is the end node so we'll do a simple check if the current node is equal to end node then we have found the path right here debug log path found we can return from here all right and we'll do the next we will remove this current node from the open list and we'll add it to the close list okay as we began be moving we have found the lowest f cost node you need to move it from the open to the close list so let's let your open list remove and the current node and add it to the close list close list add the current node okay and we can debug log this so you can see something on the screen here we are far from done with this algorithm but we can de debug here open list ol column plus I want to stringify all of the items from the open list into one string. You can do it like this, string.join. And you want to join everything with a comma, so between, and comma here. And you want to display open list. Copy it, paste it under, and close list, CL. Again, join it and close list. Okay, uh, now let's save this and let's see what we'll get here. Uh, we'll not get here much because the algorithm is not complete. Uh, what will be the next step when we 
when we have added the when we have removed the current node from the open list and added it onto the uh, closed list, and we have a current node, what do we need to do next? We need to look for all the neighbors, right? So that's what we have been doing here, right? Uh, where we where we are here? So active node, okay. We have now choose the active node, current node, and now we need to do this step here. We need to look for all of the neighbors and determine the g, h, f, n, and f cost. Okay, but that's really for the next video. Let's save this, uh, get back to your code, and let's see if we'll be having something in our consoles. Okay, I will just make this console up here. Let's play the game, and you should see this while loop will be running now, multiple times, and you can see current uh, close list. We have only one I one node, and is minus twelve and uh, six. So that's a spot spot where spot where is a warrior. When you will click on a warrior, it will be on minus eleven point six and minus five, which is the left bottom spot is minus twelve and minus six. When you look at this in the scene view, you will see the warrior is exactly on the left top mode node and that's your current node that's a node in the close list from for what you want to evaluate all of the all the neighbors so we are here right this node and now we can evaluate all of the neighbor nodes okay so this step is done we'll continue in the next lecture so see you there cheers